All right, hi guys. I just wanted to give an update on Ethereum really quick. It's uh, it's getting a decent amount of attention right now after Bitcoin uh, had its moment in the sun on its rally above 50K on Monday. Ethereum kind of shot ahead of it and was up almost 8% in the past 24 hours as opposed to Bitcoin's 4% or so. Many altcoins, of course, have been really blasting off, exceeding way beyond 8%, but for the purpose of this analysis, we'll just go through a, key, a few brief metrics for Ethereum to give you guys an idea of where the number two asset by market cap in cryptocurrency currently stands. We're looking at the last seven days of data. Uh, I already mentioned that over the past 24 hours, it's up about 7.8%, just about 8%. Um, it's about break even here over the past week, and that's actually cutting through quite a lot of volatility and um, you know, prices above 4,500 and all the way down to uh, nearly 3,500 went during the big dip that happened over the weekend. And then over the last 30 days, we can see that it's actually down about 4%. Uh, I believe uh, about uh, on, on November 7th, 30 days ago, it was just a little above 4,400 at that time. Um, so not much has really changed in the last 30 days. And, you know, by tomorrow, if Ethereum continues the kind of rally it's on, it'll be in the positive over the past 30 days. So it's something to keep an eye on. Um, all things considered, though, it's been relatively flat compared to most altcoins that are actually in the double digits on the red side of things. And that's something you definitely want to avoid. So, um, you know, Ethereum may not quite be the safe haven that Bitcoin is, but at least over the last 30 days, it's outperformed it by quite a lot. And even though it's not green, it's one of the better performing assets on this top 100 list. So that's just a quick update on price. I'll now jump into some of the important metrics that we often discuss when looking at Ethereum and other assets. Beginning with circulation, this is, of course, defined by simply looking at the amount of unique tokens moving on a given network uh, from a day-to-day -day basis. You can see each bar here resembles one day. Uh, the very faint pink trend line is representing seven days of moving average. So it just kind of smooths thing out, things out a little bit and gives you context as to what's been happening lately. And we can see there's been a modest rise in the past week with the average circulated, circulation starting to tick up a tiny bit. Um, it's nothing in uh, like the territory of just an excessive, uh, super bullish tier of circulation, but sitting at about 1.07 million tokens circulated per day over the past week certainly isn't too shabby. We you know, would love to see a breakout type of circulation like, number like this that isn't just happening as a reaction to a dump like it was back on November 15th, but all things considered, circulation is looking so-so. Uh, I won't go and show the NVT model this time around for those wondering about it. But uh, it is showing a neutral yellow signal at this point through the first six days of December after the past couple of months were actually in a semi bearish territory, which would make sense when you look at a chart like this and see just kind of what volatility has been going on with not quite the amount of circulation uh, that was justified to allow prices to, do, to continue growing like they were back here. Next up, the MVRV ratio. For those who aren't aware of how to use this, it's simply the average trading returns for 30-day investments by the, the crypto community for Ethereum. And when things are high like this, this means that the traders on average are profiting at a high degree compared to normal. On average, the MVRV line will be right around 0%. So over means things are starting to get a bit overheated. Under <coughs> would mean that uh, things are a bit oversold. And these are the kinds of times you want to buy, as you can see how all of these big MVRV drops here coincide with, boom, a, a price rebound. Boom, another price rebound here and another price rebound that eventually happened here. And then our last one that just happened over the weekend on the third and fourth during the big, big dip that I uh, mentioned earlier. So all things considered, where are we now? We're at about negative 1.5% which you can essentially just call even, nothing more, nothing less, uh, negative 15% or positive 15% uh, 
are the respective opportunity and danger zones that you want to be watching when looking at an MVRV ratio for any of the metrics here on Sandbase. Next up, really briefly, would be the social dominance and volume of Ethereum. If I highlight just volume here, you can see that we've been getting some pretty big upswings in how much Ethereum is being talked about. And that can be both good and bad. If it's talked about for the purpose of, uh, you know, shilling it and everyone's saying that Ethereum needs to get in, this is the kind of thing that can often make a short-term boost happen, but a long-term drop. If it's something that is uh, happening a little more organically without a lot of, you know, crazy price action, then that can be more encouraging for the asset. As for dominance, we are seeing a slight uptick. You can see here, I have a 200. Uh, these are these are in two hour intervals, and this is a 200 candle moving average. So roughly 400 hours that it's calculating to move up and down. And you can see it's essentially been pretty flat over the past two, three weeks or so. Um, but if you do see a lot more spikes like the ones that occurred here during the big drop, that would be a bit uh, concerning because it means that there's a bit too much focus related to Ethereum compared to the top 100 market cap assets, which is what social dominance is measuring. All right, FTX funding rate is showing that we are in slightly positive territory. Take a look at what happened over the weekend, though. We had one of the biggest drops in funding rate in almost a year. Uh, I think it might have been one of the biggest in almost two years, actually. And this, of course, was a lot of people trying to short after the huge, huge drop over the weekend, you know, likely related to COVID worries or just whales dumping, what have you. Um, and if right after this funding rate drop, we had a huge rebound. So a lot of liquidations happened here as people were trying to get cute and short. Rather than shorting when prices are high, they waited until the price dropped, dropped, dropped way down, and then had this short funding rate. And a lot of people got absolutely wrecked right here. And on the Binance side, just to give you an idea, idea of what's happening there. So here's Binance. It's essentially been flat. Uh, it's definitely not been showing any crazy signs of huge uh, greed signals like we saw back in late October, early November. And it's it did see an interesting short uh, funding right here, but it was not nearly to the extent of FTX, obviously, and it's been flat ever since. So people are a bit indecisive and not quite sure whether to to put out some more excessive longs or excessive shorts or anything like that. And this is generally a good sign. Uh, flat Binance funding rate is is good, indicating that price action is fairly organic and not, um, you know, happening in tandem with leveraged crazy longs or leverage crazy shorts. Daily active addresses. We can see that we did have an anomaly day here on the on the fifth, where we had a total of 770,000 daily active addresses. And I'll back out to show the last time we really saw that kind of number. It was in mid-May. So we're, we're coming up on about seven months since the last time we saw this kind of huge anomaly daily active address bar, which interestingly happened on a Sunday. And Sunday address activity and Saturday address activity are typically a bit lower because there's less trading going on, just like on the circulation end or the trading volume end. But this one was an anomaly and there seemed to have been a lot of addresses interacting on the ETH network, probably looking for uh, some good entry points for investments or they're trying to sell off on the rebound that occurred right on the 5th. Overall, though, daily active addresses, it was climbing. Uh, this is a 30-day um, smooth moving average line, and it's mostly started to decline once again after it was really picking up steam here going all the way into mid-November about three weeks ago. So not much to say other than let's, let's make sure that the daily active address line doesn't continue downward like this. Another anomaly active address bar like this could help out. But overall, you just want to see consistent bars like this rather than very low bars and then just one crazy day. Um, 
before just resuming as usual. Mean dollar invested age, this is essentially measuring the average age of investments in Ethereum over time. And when the line is going down, like it did starting in December of 2020, uh, that is a pretty good validator that a bull run is underway. And you can feel pretty confident when there's this kind of drop happening. In other words, the average age invested in Ethereum going down. Uh, on the other hand, once things did flatten out right after this all-time high that occurred um, back in mid-May, we see that it flattened out and it started to rise. And it, it, even though prices were moving up, this rise was a bit of a concern, but eventually it kind of flattened out. You can see between the 21st and the 14th, August 21st to November 14th, it was mostly flat with a little bit of choppiness, lots of dormant addresses kind of moving around, keeping the mean dollar invested age young and not aging. And then we saw this big drop here. The price obviously dropped right around that same time. So there was likely some reactions happening to the big drop. And it's starting to climb now again, but it's not climbing excessively. So I wouldn't call this an overly concerning signal, just slightly on the bearish side, because we'd prefer to see this kind of thing happening where the mean dollar invested age <laughs> is just really falling rapidly with a lot of healthy dormant tokens and addresses firing off on a daily basis. Weighted sentiment, uh, I'll keep it simple. This last point doesn't really count because it's still compiling the curtain day. And mostly ever since um, the big drop off on November 11th, coming up on about a month ago, We've been in mostly a positive range for Ethereum. People believe pretty strongly that Ethereum is a good asset to invest in. And many who have been positive have been rewarded, obviously. But keep in mind that eventually we'll see some fear again, maybe with a price correction or some negative fundamental news. And then you'll start seeing bars that look like this. And these are the real opportunities to buy uh, while other people are fearful and thinking that Ethereum is just going to continue downward and uh, you know, not be a good investment. So keep in mind that we're in slightly positive range, but overall a pretty neutral signal here. And last but not least, we're taking a look at whale addresses. This is the very large addresses with 100,000 to 10, 000, 10 million Ethereum in it. And it, in these respective addresses that are holding these Ethereum, we can see one year ago, the addresses here were holding about 47.35 million ETH. They are now, at this time, holding 52.45 million ETH. So if I highlight this entire area with shift held down, we can see that 5.1 million Ethereum have been added by addresses with 100,000 to 10 million Ethereum in them. This is about a 10.8% increase over that time. As of late, we did see this interesting dump here that occurred on December 2nd. Um, and really went all the way down. It looks like they dropped a total of about 655,000 Ethereum over the span of these three days or so, which is a very modest 1.24% of their stack. And now it's starting to climb once again. So, so as long as we're continuing to see a long-term rise I wouldn't be too concerned that whales are going anywhere with ETH and it continues to be a slightly bullish signal. All right, all of that said, hope you guys found this entertaining and enjoyable and informative. Uh, our goal is to make sure you're getting the kinds of data that you need to make your trading decisions easier and you can feel safer and more secure with where you're allocating your hard earned money in your crypto portfolio. So if you do like this, please feel free to like and subscribe, guys, as we are on our mission to get to 10,000 subscribers and more. Your help is always appreciated, not just with the likes and subscribes or any comments, but also by telling your friends and family if they might be interested in this kind of content. And uh, don't forget to sign up for Sandbase Pro to see all of these metrics in real time. It is only $44 a month, super affordable. And um, I really think you'd be you'd be wise to make this type of investment 
because it can pay for itself in a hurry. And uh, we're here to help any way we can. So I'll talk to you all soon. Soon, Be safe. And uh, we'll see you on Friday for our next This Week in Crypto call. Talk to you all soon.